In this video, we're going to make air rifle parts. Hi everyone, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, as I said, we're going to make some air rifle parts. Try not to drop them. Okay, so these are the parts. These are the ends of the air rifle so our air gun um, cylinders. So this is a cylinder. This is an original one that my customer uh, left us with when I first started doing uh, work for him. So this one's the front end. And if you look at the back, that's the original one. But we actually do it a little bit different now, which I'll show you a drawing in a minute. And then that's the back end. So this 20 mil by one mil pitch screws into the gun, and then this end obviously into the cylinder with an O-ring wheel ground. All right, so now these are parts I've made, and it's parts that customers brought us back just so we got a sample. And it's what it was showing us after they've been blacked, and it's a really nice finish. Um, there's no machining marks on it, and it's uh, yeah, quite good. Okay, so these are drawings that I drew for the customer. So that's just uh, an assembly drawing of how it all goes together. Three different size tubes air cylinders, although now we actually do, I think it's five, five separate, or five individual lengths. Don't know if you can see it, but that's the new front end, and it's manufactured in a different way, which actually helps me, because I think it's, it's either one less um, operation, or the operation is a lot simpler. Um, but as I'm going through, as I go through each part making them, um, I'll try and explain what we're doing and how it all works and then show you the end product, at least for that one anyway. Um, and this outside, well, this part is machined with an O-ring groove on the outside and that is to facilitate A cover, so the o-ring goes goes in the groove, and as that goes over, it creates a little bit of friction to stop it falling off. So there's no screws or anything. And this all there, you can see there, that can be spun round while the gun is being in use. And then when they want to fill the gun up uh, with air, let's just spin that all round to be all that's in the fitting, and they can get in with the uh, filler probe. And another part that we're doing for a customer is this. So this is basically just an aluminium spanner. And it's for tightening the ends into the tube. Because obviously, as you can see, it's not got big flats on. So if you go on, go on with the spanner and try and untighten that with the spanner, because it's aluminium, it's just going to completely wreck the aluminium. So I made this for the customer. It goes on and he used the, an adjustable or the correct size spanner on that one and it says the aluminium on the actual part. So I've got some, uh, some of those to do. Now I've got all the material so we're gonna, well it's November 5th today, bonfire night, yes. Um, material came on Friday, but I'll just show you the material because um, I'm going to have to sort through it all. So this is the bag of material. Now normally the suppliers send each each size part in different in different bags, but they've just chucked it all in one uh, one bag. And you can see there, that's the bit for the spanners, then longer bits, and the front ends I think. A 39 mil blanks 
thing I move along and the front the front ends are 49 mil long the back ends are 39 mil long so I'm going to have to go through all them now and sort them out I've been on to the supplier um, and the person I spoke to we're going to give him a bollocking the guys on the shop floor I don't really understand it because normally they're, uh, they're pretty good but for whatever reason they've done it like that so yeah, come Monday or whenever I get on to doing this job, I will. Uh, I'll have to get that sorted. It's Tuesday afternoon, just after three o'clock, and we're now on to doing these air rifle parts. I've started off doing the uh, spanners first, so I've already done a couple of them on the first side. So I'll set another one going, and I'll uh, try and video inside the machine. They could get a bit messy. tools on this first side that tool there is a it's just a roughing tool but we use it for finishing as well it's a WNMG the six-sided triangle if you like and that second tool there that's a multi-tool, it just has one tick, but it does the drilling, it's going to do the rough machining, and it's also finishing off as well, and the finish is uh, good enough for this particular job, as, as the spanner is just, a, is just an actual tool, but it does actually leave a pretty decent finish anyway, so... There you get can get out with just one tool. And there you go, that's that side machined on that one part. So we've got we've got six to go, we've got 104 to do. So we'll get that done and then I'll show you the next part. Right, it's Friday afternoon and now I'm having a cup of tea. Cheers. And if we go over to here now, I'll just have another one finished. I'll take that out. If you have a look there, I've machined the uh, jaws out so we can hold on the part that was already machined. And that keeps it true. So when the second side's machined, that part is true to the uh, first part, and everything looks uh, looks good. Now previously, I have machined jaws out every time, but with this set of jaws, I'm going to keep these jaws specifically for doing this job. So in future, I shouldn't have to uh, spend the time borrowing the jaws out. I've mis After I machined them, I've uh, taken all the uh, all the burrs off and uh, yeah we should be uh, we should be good to go every time we uh, we do that second side all right let's uh, I'll stick another one in and uh, we'll try and video it again so push it push it right up to the back Make sure your jaws are clean before um, before you put your part in. And let's go. Could get messy again. This time we're using three tools. We're using the WNMG for the roughing. Now we're using a finishing tool 
which is going to come down the front first to finish it off and then it's going to machine the diameter so finishing tool down front first and then the diameter and then final tool is the multi tool again and okay, we're just going to put a little radius on that, uh, on that inside bar just to make it look nice and uh, and take the uh, burr off, off the hole from the previous operation and on that bigger diameter there we've also got a slight radius on so again that takes the burr off and no one cuts the fingers and it looks uh, it looks nice Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to get cracked on and uh, get those finished, get this uh, operation finished, and then we'll be on to the uh, to the milling. So I've got turning finished on uh, those spanners. We're going to do some milling now. So first off, we're going to tram the uh, vice in. We've got the DTI set up. Once we've done that, we're going to change the vice jaws for these jaws which are pre-machined yeah, we've got four, we can put four spanners in and machine those at the same time not too far out at the moment just needs a little bit of a tap uh, that way, I think. Okay, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be good enough for what we uh, we need for this particular job. So that's that vice nipped down now. Okay, so uh, what we need to do now is change those uh, vice jaws. Okay, so we've got those parts set up. We've uh, set G54 work offset on the centre of this first one and then the program just repeats the same thing another three times along the x-axis we're using two tools two 8 mil carbide end mills one's the roughing tool and the other one's the finishing tool uh, so we get a decent finish or as decent a finish as we can get on this machine um, so yeah let's uh, Let's get to it and get some uh, machining done.
So this is the second lot off. I measured the first ones and the first ones were uh, on size so that was pretty good for first first lot, first batch and where are we? There we are. 30mm hexagon machine done. So we'll do all them and then we'll come in and do this side. Okay, so it's Monday morning, so we're back on to the air rifle parts now. I've already done two or three, just to set up and make sure all the dimensions are uh, where they need to be. Now if you remember on the, uh, on the back ends, on these ones, that bar I measured with a telescopic gauge. Now I have set up that bar with a telescopic gauge or measured it to make sure it's where we need it to be to start with but because that's not a critical dimension as in it's not having any o-rings or anything fitted into that particular bar if it's plus 0.1 it doesn't matter if it's minus 0.1 it doesn't matter so I've got another one set up in machine now uh, and I'll uh, take a video of that enjoy Okay, so that's another one done. I'm going to get on and uh, get the rest of this side done. That's first side of the uh, front ends done. I'll start up there, look. 
So the next job to do is to do the other side of both the front and rear end, back ends. Um, and I have these, have these jaws here, which were machined up last time I did these, but they were machined upon a different chuck, so I might, might just have to pull them in and take a, take a cut just to make sure. But what I'm going to do is I'll put in the uh, film in the chuck. I fit that in, and I'll clock up on the uh, on this diameter here and see uh, see if we're concentric. If it is, we're good to go. Can start machining that second side. If not, we'll, as I say, we'll just have to take a skim out a skim out of the jaws so it is running true. Right, so I've got the jaws in. Got the part clamped up, and we've got the DTI set up there. So if I just uh, start the spindle there, as you can see, it's at least a couple of well, 0 0.05 of a mil out, two thou out. Um, but we want it to be uh, spot on, really. Uh, yeah, so because we want the uh, five mil all to be spot on concentric with the uh, 22 mil bar in the other side because the regulator that goes in there fits in both both the bars so it needs to be uh, spot on so I'm going to stop that uh, take it out um, and I'm going to move the jaws in by one notch and then uh, take a bit of a lick out of that So now I've bored the jaws out a little bit to true them up and if you look at the DTI there that's hardly moving at all which is where we need to be so that's all good so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get our tool set up now second side of the back end so you can see it's held in there just on that uh, plain part behind the thread aluminium joss so it's not going to mark it I have turned the hydraulic pressure down to the chuck so it doesn't crush it I think it's on about 200 bar at the moment and it's uh, that's completely fine for, for clamping on uh, basically what's essentially a tube so Let's get uh, let's get this machined. compared to what we could take and that's just because as I said before we are only holding on this way or two so we don't want to be putting too much of a cut on and uh, causing it to pull it out with a uh, pull it, pull it out with a chuck Five millimeter drill. And now we're going in with a little boring bar to open it out to six mil.
just a groove at the uh, at the back of the thread there. And then we're threading an M20 by one mil pitch thread. And this is the bit that actually screws into the gun. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's it machined. So I have a bit of a confession. When I first did these, first batch I made weren't right because that. Uh, that bar wasn't great, so what we have now, uh, what I did was uh, I made my own go no go gauge. So that's the go gauge, and that's quite a nice fit, no go gauge that won't go in at all. So that bar should be uh, should be fine for uh, for the customer and uh, the part that's going into it. Right, I'll get on and uh, machine the rest of these. Right, so we nearly got the uh, second side of the front ends done. Just got a few more to do there. Let's have a look. That's the side we've been doing. So I'll put the counter bar in, 10mm deep hole, um, yeah, and then threading. And then we've put the recess in at the bottom so that that uh, through wall will meet up with that when, uh, when we come to put it in the mill. Yep, so we'll finish these off and then we need to put them back in this, this way on and do the bar and the thread and what have you for the, uh, for the valve in the, uh, in the tube end of the, uh, of the part. So, yeah, that's all good we get in there. Right, so we're on to doing, uh, doing this bit. Putting that thread in the bottom of there. And because it's 10mm in and it's not actually on face, what I've done is I've set a sacrificial piece of aluminium up in, in here so I can zero, set my Z0 on all my tools and semi-diameters, which I have done. They're all, um, all quite small tools. Um, and basically all I've, done, all I've done with that is machine that down to, to the diameter of the part that we're holding on. Um, so we've been able to do that. And then what we'll do is, uh, get it. Yep. We get this part. We'll put it in. That should be running all nice and true. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just come up up to this face. I'll put a bit of paper on there and then just move a bit of paper backwards and forwards until I feel a bit of friction on my first tool and that'll be the uh, Z axis set all my dimension, sorry all my diameters are they're already set so I'll do that, I'll run a couple off, make sure everything's fine and then um, we'll vid video it uh, running okay so we've done a few now uh, just getting uh, all dimensions set up. We're still working on that thread a little bit. Still is a little bit tight once uh, once the threading tool's done it. But we just rub, run the uh, the tap down it, and I'm still adjusting it uh, till we get it where it tap is just to say to taking a little bit off or you know just rubbing. So that's it set up in machine. I'll try and take a video, uh, but I don't think you'll be able to see much, but. Here we go.
So that's that one done. We've got a 3mm all in bottom there, and then it's machined out to the threading size for M8 by 0 0.0. Sorry, M8 by 0 0.75. And that'll be uh, we we'll get all those done, and that'll be all turning done on uh, on the front ends and the back ends. And then we've got some milling to do on them, and uh, we've got the cap to to go on these, which we need to machine. Okay, this is the setup for doing the milling on the front and rear ends. So we've got front ends, back ends. And what I've done is I've machined these two sides at 30.2 to take the back end of the front end and these two at 31.8 to take the front end of the front end. Now this back corner here, I've used that as X, Y, 0. These two, these are on G54 work offset and because of the height difference we've put these two on G55 so the XY position is the same and then we've just got G54 for the different Z heights now we have done all the rest this is actually the last the last batch and that one marked red uh, when I was machining that turning that when we put this all in that went slightly too big that was the first one we did so that one's a scrapper but when I put it in we can keep that just as a just as a reference a reference uh, part and away we go So that's an 8mm cutter, putting the 36mm flats on. On the G54 work offset. Uh, this is a slot drill, 3mm slot drill, which is plunging down to minus 12. The bottom of the bore is minus 10. So we're going 2mm deep, so it basically lines this 3mm drill up. And this drill has been drilled all the way through till it meets up with that recess in the other end. Okay, that's it, we'll give that a, a blowout. Yeah, and if you have a look there, we've got flats on there. Now we've got that all in there. And that does me too, I checked the first couple that came off and that's, uh, that's worked spot on as that. So yeah, that's that operation finished, and I think because we've done it like this, we've got the, the operation on that and that finished a lot quicker because there's a lot less tool changes than putting either one at a time in or two at a time. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Next thing we're going to do is we have a slot to put in this side, this bottom side, and we've got a hole to put in in under there which down there before I did this bit I machined hexagon in there which is for the for those and then just a 31.8 mil all at this side so we can hold these ones in there so we'll get to uh, yeah, get on and uh, get those ones done 
Okay, so it's Monday afternoon and these air rifle parts are taking quite a while. Not just because the job's taking a while because there's a few parts and a few operations. But a few other reasons as well. As I said earlier in the video, um, the mill packed up and I had to spend a day sorting that out, which that was just general maintenance. Didn't cost me anything in parts or labour for anybody else to come, so that were good. It just cost me a day. Um, and then last Friday, as I said, I broke off to do another job. That's fine, got that job done. Started back Monday and has all been going pretty well. And then on Friday, well, Thursday, I had off because I've had this cough and flu uh, and I thought right I'm going to have Thursday off see if I can uh, get myself a little bit better, feeling a bit better I'm still feeling rubbish to be honest but we're carrying on and then I'm coming back, th coming back Thursday, uh, sorry Friday and finished the last turning part, the uh, last turning operation on the front stroke back ends all fine and I started on another job because uh, on Thursday I had an email from one of my other customers who was after um, their job fairly urgently and I said yep yeah, well I'll just finish the, turn the last turning job on this part and then I'll be on to your job which I did eventually get on to doing Friday afternoon and then the lathe packed up now I know what it is, it's a transistor on the spindle drive now electronics is kind of over my head a little bit um, but I have a guy who comes in and sorts it out but he can't get here while Friday at earliest so that machine's down pretty much well over a week um, but I have, as I say, I've been doing some of the milling on the front stroke back ends and I'll show you some footage of that uh, in a second um, but yeah uh, these are just taking away just because of various things yeah I just uh, yeah just got to carry on so yeah here's, uh, here's rest of the footage then Right, we've got machine back up and running now and we've got uh, the caps started we've got a few of them done already we're about halfway through so we're just machining diameter on one end and then the bar where the pressure gauge will sit where you're able to see the pressure gauge and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in the mill holding on this piece or probably actually um, making a mandrel up with a bolt through and a cap on end and we'll do it on dividing head and we'll go in probably with something like a 4 mil milling cutter or a 6 mil milling cutter machine the uh, hole on one side rotate it 180 machine the hole on the other side and then we're going to put it back in in the lathe in some machine jaws and we'll machine the other side and the reason for doing it this way is that we don't any get we don't get any massive burrs on the holes when we go through with a milling cutter or a drill. Um, there will still be a little bit to take off but the customer likes to do that itself and it'll just mean it's it's a lot smaller and not too bad. So that's that. One has just finished. There we go. There we are. Another one done. Now next up on this will be, as I say, putting that uh, putting that hole in. Right, so we're putting eight mil hole in now, or eight and a half mil hole in. We haven't machined this part. We're going to machine that bit afterwards. I've already done the other side of this, so we're just turning it 180 degrees on the dividing head uh, to get the other side. So we'll do that. Can't really see a lot. This is just feeding down 
ramping down into parts at full depth, I think it's 6.25, which is enough that when it bores inside out, um, it cleans it up. A couple of roughing cut, cuts on the uh, diameter, and then a finishing cut. And then that's it done, and then I'm going to take it out. So it's trying to do this two handed here, one handed here, sorry. So I'll take that out. rubbish out I'm gonna give her a blow out yeah make sure uh, make sure all jaws are clean make sure your parts clean and then bam for up and then that's it and that's gonna That's going to do the inside bar and machine the outside. We do still have some burrs on, but we're leaving that to, for the customer to do. Because um, he, know, he knows how he, how he wants it and he does it so it's, he doesn't leave any marks uh, for when it comes to anodizing. So yeah, that's uh, we've just got a few more of these to do. Uh, probably another half an hour's work or so and uh, that's that's that part done and that's this order finished happy days so we've got to light to end at tunnel finally got this job complete so i'll just show you how it goes together and i i know i explained it a little bit earlier on but there's there's this tube a uh, cylinder um one minute, need to get the back end. Uh, back end. Right. So that's the back end. As I said, should have a O-ring on here, and that goes into one end. I'm not sure which way around this goes. Uh, rifles ain't my thing. I'm just doing a job. Now that screws into there, and then that that would screw into the gun. It's not quite in a bit of a bear on that end of that thread, but. There we go, so that's that end. And then we have this front end. So that's the filler roll. Uh, yeah, that 8 mil roll. Uh, and we make, or I make the probes. They have another fitting on that clamps onto the end of, a, of an airline, a foster fitting it's called. Um, so yeah, again, that screws into the tube, we'd have an O-ring on. And then we can screw that into there. Like so. So that's front end, and then we've got the caps. So that's, that's them. We've got the O-ring on there. And then there we go, and that's on the o-ring, just creates a little bit of friction so it doesn't fall off. And with the, and with the caps, it can be uh, lined up with a filler roll so you can fill it up and then when you've done that, so you don't get any dust or anything in it, swivel it around 90 degrees and there you go, that's it. Now that's a little bit different to the original one which I think I showed you earlier on in the video. It just means that that 8mm hole there, that's offset, which we have made those before and I think we have to, because it's offset, we have to uh, go in with a milling cutter so we got a flat on it and then going with a drill centre drill and a drill and a reamer 
but doing it this way it's it's we lo lose a tool. Um, yeah, and I think it works out it works out quite nice. So yeah, so that's that job done. If you like this video, um, subs well press the like button. Um, if you like the content on this channel, press the subscribe button and all that jazz. Um, I'm going to go and uh, clean the machine off, have a sweep up and we'll go on to the next job. So in the meantime, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.